morning. We welcome you to God's house. We pray the Lord's blessings on our worship service this morning. Today we are celebrating the day of Pentecost with divine service setting four with Holy Communion. So we invite the congregation to join us for our opening hymn number 498, Come Holy Ghost Creator Blessed. Father, 
seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner.
this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in this holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Will by no means enter. 
And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Since Madeline is unable to answer for herself, we as God's church will answer on her behalf. So now I ask Madeline, in the presence of God in this congregation, do you renounce the devil? If so, say, yes, I renounce it. Yes, I renounce it. Do you renounce all of his works? If so, say, yes, I renounce them. Yes, yes I renounce them. Do you renounce all of his ways? If so, say, yes, I renounce them. Yes, yes I, I renounce them. them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? If so, say, yes, I believe. Yes, yes I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. If so, say, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, say, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Madeline, do you desire to be baptized? If so, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do Madeline Melzer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with His grace until life everlasting. Amen. Receive this white garment to show that she has received, that she has been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness and covers all her sin. So now she shall stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for her from the foundation of the world. And receive this burning light to show that she has received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him in the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made Madeline a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive her in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear her word, hear God's word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. We, we welcome, welcome you in, in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you generously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted battle in the new birth and holy baptism and have made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as now she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she would faithfully grow to lead a godly life for the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.
The Old Testament reading this morning is from Numbers chapter 11. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to them, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, there were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Israel Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthenians, Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Hygieia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Abraham, Arabic. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as they, you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor to smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And I shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord.
Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. Glory to to you, O Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We now join together confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the sermon hymn number 497, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord.
mercy and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The lesson for our meditation this morning is the gospel lesson read a moment ago from John 7. And our sermon theme today is entitled, Flowing Waters of Life. Dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Well, as you know, today in the church here we celebrate Pentecost. And it might seem like Pentecost isn't held in the highest of regards as some of the other church festivals. When we think of the great church festival celebrations, we might think of Christmas or Good Friday or Easter. Maybe Palm Sunday or Ash Wednesday might come to mind. But Pentecost might kind of get lost in the shuffle. But the truth is that Pentecost is an extremely important day in the church year. Because on Pentecost, God blessed his holy Christian church with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, as you've heard in our recent readings and sermons, Jesus had been promising to send the helper, the advocate, because he knew that he was going to be returning to heaven and he didn't want to leave his church as orphans. Well, God always keeps his word. And the account of Pentecost is recorded in our first reading today in Acts chapter 2. When Jesus ascended to heaven, the last thing he said to the apostles in Luke, in Luke 24, 49 was, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. They probably had no clue what Jesus was talking about. Power from on high? Promise of the Father? They weren't really sure what they ought to expect. They certainly didn't realize that a mighty rushing wind would fill the house where they were sitting, and they had no clue that tongues of fire would come down upon them. They probably didn't think that as a result of all of this, they would suddenly be able to speak foreign languages perfectly and proclaim the mighty works of God to everyone without language now being a barrier. They were about to finally understand this, that salvation in Jesus earned on the cross is meant for everybody, not just a certain group of people. Now that was quite a change. And it was a change that they were totally passive participants in. It was all the work of God. And now the joy of that work of the church could begin, and it would continue until Jesus' second coming, because Jesus says that the gates of hell will never overcome his church. All right, so what does all of this have to do with us today in greater Chicago, Illinois in 2023? Why is Pentecost such an important day for this specific congregation? Well, the answer lies in God's word of joy and encouragement for you this morning, which is that though by nature you thirsted for eternal life, craving a taste of living water, forgiveness in Christ has made you a source of flowing living water that quenches others' thirst for Jesus. By the grace of God, you've been given the Holy Spirit, who always points us to Jesus, from whom comes flowing waters of life. That's the message coming to us today from John 7. And Jesus' words to us today show us just how big a blessing that Pentecost is to us and to this community. You heard Jesus say in verse 38, Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So Jesus says that faith in him is the source of life. Without faith in him, there is no life. It's that way because of the age-old problem of sin. Going all the way back to Adam and Eve, sin has always corrupted all of creation, everything in it, everyone in it. Paul said in Romans 3, the wages of sin is death. The hard fact. 
flat to truth is that sin kills, and all of us by nature are sinful. By nature, we crave a sip of living water to save us while walking through a barren desert of sin where there's not a drop of living water to be found. So we needed a Savior. We needed Jesus. The world needed Jesus. And to make the problem worse, our human nature always looks inward. Our human nature is only concerned with ourselves, and it doesn't worry in the least about the needs of our neighbors here, body or soul. So yes, we need Jesus. Lombard needs Jesus. Apart from Jesus, we would have continued to search for flowing waters of life, and we never would have found it. But you see, the Lord of Pentecost came back to earth to save you and me. Your sin and mine was never going to be able to stop Jesus' love for you. Jesus' love for you drove him to remove the wedge of sin between he and us. The wages of sin is death, but Jesus' death paid that price. Jesus knew of your thirst, and he took mercy upon you. Your thirst for life moved him in his heart so that he gladly died and rose for you. Jesus says that believing in him gives life and your thirst was eternally quenched when he saved you from sin through water. The baptismal water washed away your sin and baptized you into him. It happened again just a very short time ago. At the baptismal font, he has given you the promised Holy Spirit. That is where he gave you the ability to believe in him. So this is our need for Pentecost. Jesus said to believe in him and you would be saved, but without the Holy Spirit, you can't believe. Our human nature never would believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. It would reject Jesus and everything about him every single time. So we needed help. We needed flowing waters of life to wash away the drought of unbelief. We needed the Holy Spirit and we got the Holy Spirit. Without him we would have been blind and hardened to Jesus. But all of the wonders of heaven has been revealed to us and belief in Christ has been instilled in our hearts. Because we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your baptism was your own personal Pentecost. Your baptism washed you with flowing waters of life. And now comes the blessing of Pentecost to the community. Those who are outside of the faith, by nature, are in the same boat as us. Except they're still in their sin and they do not yet know Jesus as Lord and Savior. So they're blind to the things of God. They still thirst. So how will they know about Jesus? How will they believe? How will their thirst be quenched? Well, you may have guessed it. Yeah, the answer is the Holy Spirit. Salvation in Jesus is not just for me and it's not just for you. It's a gift that he wants shared with the entire world. That's where Pentecost comes in because as the bride of Christ, the church, it was established for the purpose of proclaiming the word of Jesus and to administer his sacraments. And that's the means through which the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit drives the engine of faith, and the church is where the Holy Spirit can be found. God gave his Holy Spirit to his church on Pentecost so that, through the church and everyone in it, Christ crucified for the sins of the whole world could be proclaimed to all corners of the earth, and baptisms and the Lord's Supper could be celebrated. So out of the Holy Spirit flows flowing waters of life, and the Holy Spirit is in you, so now you are God's chosen instrument to be used to bring those who thirst to Christ. 
rivers of flowing waters of life pour out of you to the world as the Holy Spirit of Pentecost empowers you. They flow as you comfort somebody who is afraid, as you comfort somebody who is hurting. They pour out of you as you perform acts of service and love to your neighbor just because. They flow as you pray with and for your family and your friends and your associates and your neighbors in the name of Jesus. They flow out of you as you speak the powerful name of Jesus, telling of the faith to the lost or those who may have wandered astray. The thirst of so many people are satisfied as you openly and faithfully display your Christianity in a life devoted to serve and love God and serve and love other people. The waters pour out from you as you use your voice and your actions to proclaim Jesus as the source of eternal life and the forgiveness of sins. And God does this through you as a direct result of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit can and does change everything. He changes the priorities in one's life, turning us away from looking inward to looking towards God and then outward towards our neighbors. He opens our eye. He opens the eyes of those who are blind to Christ, and He gives them sight. The Holy Spirit opens the mind of those who do not understand the things in the Word of God, and He gives them understanding. Holy Spirit melts the cold of heart the hearts of the unbeliever, giving them the warmth of faith. He quenches the thirsty and the dying with flowing waters of life. So all of this is done through the church and through you personally. This is why we're all here. This is why Pentecost was given to the church in the first place. So that through the church, through you, the lost would be found. The Holy Spirit leads you to love Jesus so much that you want to share his joy and his peace with everybody. God has placed people that are in your lives for a reason, and the reason is you are to be God's mouthpiece to them. So as you serve them, Jesus serves them. As you love them, Jesus loves them. So rejoice at Pentecost, because now that the Holy Spirit has been given to you, He now can reach many, many others through you. They thirst... So give them a drink from flowing waters of life, because Jesus is a fountain that never will run dry. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the second coming. Amen. We continue with the prayer hymn, hymn number 923.
God in Christ Jesus and everyone according to their needs, the congregation would please respond with hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, 3,000 soul, souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. In the same way, fill our congregation, our synod, and the whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew us that the sacraments may be administered faithfully and many more would be called by the gospel, enlightened with your gifts, and sanctified and kept in the true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets, and you fulfilled your word in Jesus. Jesus was planted in death for our sins and raised for our justification, and in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Grant pastors who would preach this truth faithfully, and church workers and teachers who are devoted to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised that all who drink from your living water will well up to eternal life. Help us to show forth in holy life the fruits of the Spirit and live with love towards our neighbor. Remove all pride and prejudice and hate that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel shamefully, but will give welcome to all people in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service, and we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us and for the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibly. Keep safe everyone who travels this weekend. Bless our nation and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow us, looking always to, to you from whom these gifts come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Light of this dark world, you have sent your Holy Spirit to the church as the comforter. Soothe the wounds of your hurting people. According to your will, bring restoration to broken families. Heal the sick. Uplift the depressed, provide for the poor, uphold the forgotten, and answer the prayers of all who call out to you for aid. We offer our prayers of strength and healing for those among us in need who we name in the privacy of our own thoughts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, giver of the Holy Spirit, clear away all distractions, that our hearts and minds may be focused upon you. As Jesus comes to us with the bread which is his body and the cup of his blood, help us receive your gifts with faith and to live from them. Receive our praise and thanksgiving together with the tithes and offerings that we bring as tokens of our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. And Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will, to comfort us in every temptation and misfortune, and to defend us against all error, that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by Jesus' death, obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and on all creation. Above all, we give thanks to you for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore free, praising you and saying,
for joining us, both those of you who are live with us in person and those of you watching our live stream on the internet. We pray that hearing God's word of mercy and forgiveness and receiving his body and blood will be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path as you go about the rest of your week. A couple of announcements. Immediately following dismissal, we invite everyone into Parish Hall for a period of fellowship. Refreshments will be served for all, and we can warmly greet one another. Immediately following um, fellowship time, our adult Bible study will be preempted because we're having one of our period periodic voters assemblies. So if you're a member of the voting assembly or would like to become a member of the voting assembly, please stick around and uh, we'll be able to uh, conduct the business of our congregation. Uh, tomorrow being Memorial Day, uh, two things of note. One, uh, we invite everybody out to our, our cemetery at 9 a.m. in the morning because as usual, the Villa Park VFW will be uh, sending over their members for a 21 gun salute commemorating, commemorating Memorial Day. We've done it for a very long time and the tradition will continue tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in our cemetery. cemetery. Uh, also, since it's Memorial Day, there will be no worship service tomorrow night. Monday evening, worship will return uh, the following Monday, June the 5th. Uh, look for an upcoming modified uh, Monday evening worship schedule throughout the summer that will be posted later this week that has been approved by the Board of Elders. Uh, also this week, since school is now out, there's going to be the, the usual summer changes. Obviously, no opening chapel for school on Wednesday mornings until school reconvenes. Uh, we will not be having our weekly Wednesday morning adult Bible study through the summer. That also will come back in the, uh, in the fall. We will be having our Wednesday online adult Bible study continuing through the summer. Uh, it still will be Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. And our, sun, our Sunday adult Bible study after service, with the exception of today, will continue throughout the summer. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? If you're staying for the voters meeting and you have children, never fear. We'll have veggie tails running in the parish hall. Very good. And one in the back.